everybody, it's Jessica. Welcome back to the Mommy Archives. A few weeks ago, I filmed a video about surviving sleep regressions and my tips for getting through them. And in that video, I mentioned that Kennedy sleeps on a toddler floor bed. And I asked if you guys would like some more information on how we made the transition to a floor bed. And several of you said, yes, you are interested in learning more about that. So today I am sitting before you in front of a different bed that is not a floor bed <laughs> to talk to you about uh, Kennedy's transition to a toddler floor bed. So first off, I want to give just a little synopsis of Kennedy's sleep history to provide some context for the reasons why we thought a floor bed would be appropriate for her to try out. So Kennedy has never been a naturally good sleeper. She's always struggled with sleep a little bit. We've tried um, different methods of sleep training and stuff. There was a period of her life where she was sleeping pretty decently, but it was short-lived to be honest. And we've dealt with a lot of sleep regressions since then and pretty much we've just learned she's just not the greatest sleeper ever which is okay, but we want to do everything in our power to make a good, comfortable sleeping environment for her and to make her bedroom conducive to sleep and her environment conducive to sleep, whatever. So we learned when Kennedy was a little, a little about around 11 months or so, so a little younger than a year, that a crib just wasn't cutting in anymore. <laughs> a crib was just not conducive to sleep for her. Many toddlers and babies need the boundaries of a crib. They need the physical boundaries of the crib to keep them in, to make them feel safe and secure. Uh, Kennedy was the complete opposite though. She just wanted to get out of the dang thing. <laughs> and she came very close to like getting to the point where she could almost like lift her leg over. But when she realized she wasn't quite big enough to do that yet, she started throwing middle of the night tantrums. And when I mean tantrums, I mean like tantrums. <laughs> I did not expect out of a child younger than one year old. It was, um, it, it was interesting, let <laughs> me just put it that way. Uh, she would bang her head against the crib, she would stand up and make herself like free fall backwards to the back of the cribs. She would bang on the crib, she would try desperately to get out. She was absolutely inconsolable. We tried to like get down on her level, pat her through the bars, whatever, speak to her softly, uh -uh, did not cut it. She wanted out and she made it very clear that she wanted out. She hated the crib so much and so it really put us in a pickle because we couldn't let her keep throwing these tantrums and throwing her against the side of the crib. On the one hand, I was like, well, if we keep going in there and taking her out, then she's just gonna keep doing it. But on the other hand, I didn't want herself in there hurting herself because it's one thing to uh, be throwing a tantrum but it's another thing when you're like throwing yourself on the side of the crib because you hate it so much and you just want to get out of the dang thing and you're literally causing harm to yourself. I mean, she was a baby. We didn't know uh, exactly how to solve this predicament and so I just really gave it some thought. And I had kind of always liked the idea of a floor bed when it was time to get out of her crib. I just didn't think we'd be making the transition out of her crib so soon. But nonetheless, uh, we found ourselves in this predicament where this was happening night after night after night after night. Uh, we were bringing her more and more back into bed with us, which was not the solution that we were seeking. And so we just decided to give the floor bed a shot. We already had a twin mattress, and so there was kind of nothing to lose. We put the mattress on the floor and just went for it. So at this point, you're probably wondering why we chose a floor bed. And there were some safety elements involved, as well as just some, I guess, theoretical kind of parenting approaches involved as well. I didn't feel like she was at the point where um, I would put her in a toddler bed because she, at that point she wasn't walking yet and so I didn't want it off the floor where it was more difficult for her to get into. She's a really proficient crawler and cruiser and stuff, but I wasn't comfortable with the idea if she got off in the middle of the night or during nap time or whatever, you know, her hurting herself trying to get off or hurting herself trying to get back on. Not only did we feel like a floor bed might be a little safer for her, we also liked kind of this idea of a more Montessori approach to her nursery. And we're not completely Montessorifying our entire house or anything like that. We weren't seeking to do that in its entirety, um, but we liked the idea, the Montessori idea of kind of viewing the whole room as the crib instead of just viewing the bed as a crib, if that makes sense. And so the whole entire nursery got completely child-proofed. We have latches on the drawers um, so that she can't like open them and crawl them or whatever. She can't open the bottom one, so she has access to blankets and some books and stuff that we keep in those. Um, but there's no access to any outlets that she can stick her fingers in or anything like that. Her shelf is low where she can access all her toys and books and stuff, but we keep a minimal amount of toys and books in her room. And essentially everything was just put on her level. So let's go ahead and talk about 
how we made this transition. So before we used it for sleeping, we just introduced the bed to Kennedy. We took out the crib, put in the twin mattress very, very quickly, brought her in, got her excited about it. This is your new bed, yay! And she got on it and she was happy and she was like throwing herself around. It's your new bed. You like the bed? <laughs> yeah. That's yours. That's yours. We love you, new bed. <laughs> she just got very excited about it, and so we're like, all right, good. We're off to a good start. And after that, we just started with naps. We did the switch in the morning so that she could take her two naps, because she was taking two naps a day at that point, in the bed, get accustomed to the idea so that nighttime, hopefully, fingers crossed, wasn't so difficult. So first nap time came, we put her in the bed, um, we tried to just say goodnight and leave. Right out of the bed she went to the door, knocking on it, calling for us, all that good stuff. And we just had to be pretty consistent with it. Um, we would go back in the room, put her down, pat her back, say it's not night time, this is our new bed, this is where we sleep now, whatever. Um, and of course there was a little bit of resistance, like there is with any kind of change, but there wasn't the tantrums that we had dealt with before with her like throwing herself on the sides of the crib because uh, she was able to get out. So even though she didn't necessarily want to be in bed at that point, she wasn't hurting herself trying to get out of it or getting frustrated when she couldn't get out of it. So she would just go to the door, not call for us, whatever. So with the first nap, she she actually ended up pouting herself to sleep by the door essentially. <laughs> she, uh, we didn't let her get out of hand or anything like that, but we did just try to keep encouraging her, let her know it was nap time, we needed to be in her bed, and I didn't quite get it. So second nap, same situation, except this time it was much more brief, she didn't cry as much or throw as much of a fit when we tried to put her down, and I can't remember honestly if she fell asleep in bed or by the door. But Overall, the process of getting to sleep was much shorter than the first time. She didn't put up as much of a fuss. Fast forward to nighttime. It's bedtime now. We put her in the bed. She stayed in the bed. Wonderful news, right? So it didn't take her that long to realize, oh, this is a good place to sleep now. <laughs> it's more comfortable than the floor is. There's more room in my crib. I'm not being surrounded by these bars that I don't like. This is a safe place. This is where I'm meant to sleep. And so she latched onto that concept pretty quickly. Since then, really, most of our regressions that we dealt with have not been getting Kennedy to sleep. It's been getting Kennedy to stay asleep. And so she loves her bed now. She doesn't mind going in it. Knock on wood, because you know, <laughs> I'm saying that out loud, so that means we're probably going to deal with issues soon here. But uh, really, though, truthfully, though, uh, getting her into her bed at nighttime or for bedtime or nap times or whatever is not the struggle it used to be because uh, she now enjoys her bed. So I think that about sums it up. If you have any more questions, just leave them in the comments and I'll reply to them there. Ultimately, Kennedy, I'm gonna be honest with you, is still not a fantastic sleeper, but this arrangement has much worked much better for us than the previous one with her crib. I felt like we made the right move at the right time. We had to make a choice regarding, you know, how we were gonna handle these nighttime tantrums. And ultimately, she definitely prefers this sleep arrangement to a crib. Alright guys, that is everything I have for you today. I hope this video was helpful or informative to you. Like I said, if you have any more questions, just feel free to ask in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the Mommy Archives and like what you see, I would love if you click that subscribe button down below. I post new videos every single week and I love getting to know you guys. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye! -bye.